Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. I continue my LJ3647 investigations and here in the test bench I already have uh, the next interesting CPU installed but in this video I'm going to talk about this Intel Xeon Platinum 8124M. This CPU I purchased from eBay and unfortunately it came to me uh, in non-working conditions. First of all, I could see that there is a mechanical impact onto the CPU head spreader, which theoretically shall not affect the CPU performance, but on the back side of the CPU these tiny components were damaged and the CPU did not work. Luckily for me, BIOS I engineer managed to restore the CPU and now it works. So in this video I'm going to benchmark it and show you what you can expect from this CPU. In particular it will be very interesting because a Xeon Platinum 8124M has basically identical technical specification to a rather popular Xeon Gold 6150. So, if I'm going to compare specs between a Xeon 8124M and a Xeon 6150, I also need to add two extra CPUs, a Xeon 6138 and 6148. These four CPUs will deliver very similar performance and the results I demonstrate in this video you can apply to all four of them. Starting with the 6138 and 6148, we have two almost identical CPUs. Both of them have 20 cores, 40 threads, turbo frequency up to 3.7 GHz, 28 MB of L3 cache, and the only difference is the TDP package. 6138 is limited to 125 watts, while 6148 is limited to 150 watts. If you have one of those LJ3647 workstations that support up to 125 Watt CPUs, then 6138 is your option. In all other cases, 6148 makes much more sense. Now, 6150 and 8124M are also very similar. Both of them have 18 cores and 36 threads, and that means that they have less L3 cache, only 25 megabytes. But the TDP package is 165 and 240 watts. 6150 also has a slightly higher turbo frequency of 3.7 GHz, while 8124M have a max turbo frequency of 3.5 GHz. But under load, both of these CPUs have about the same frequency, around 3.4 GHz. The big difference is the TDP package, of course. Most of the standard LGA3647 motherboard support CPUs up to 205 Watt. And that means that 8124M will not work on these motherboards without extra modifications. On the other hand, Xeon Gold 6150 has TDP package of 165 watts and that means that it works on almost everything. It also works on Dell 7820 workstation that is limited to 165 watts. This is why on eBay 6150 costs almost double as much compared to 8124M. It's also worth mentioning that with my Supermicro X11 SPI-TF, 8124M does not work by default either. Bias I engineer had to come up with a custom-made bias and reprogram VRM of my motherboard to make them work together. Also jumping a little bit ahead, 8124M never consumed 240 watts under my testing, so I really don't know why they needed 240 watts in this CPU. 205 watts would be just enough and the CPU would work in most of the motherboards. If you're interested in the boring technical details about 8124M, then in the video description you will find links to CPU-Z validation and Geekbench 6 result. Here I can mention that CPU supports memory up to DDR4-2666 in a 6-channel configuration. Just like any other LJ3647 Xeons, it has 48 PCI Express 3.0 lanes, and the 25MB L3 cache is pretty pathetic compared to Xeon E5s. For example, E5-2697v3 with just 14 cores has 35MB of cache. Looking at the memory performance, we have very similar results compared to the previously tested the Xeon 6268CL. Both of the CPUs deliver about 100 gigabits per second memory read, write and copy. Memory latency with 8124M is slightly better though. We have 84 against 86 nanoseconds with the 6268CL, while the memory timings were identical. 
Xeon 8124M is pretty stable when it comes to the CPU clock frequency. In Cinebench R23 test with all CPU cores utilized or with just one CPU core utilized, the CPU keeps its 3.4 GHz pretty stable. Unfortunately, today's Windows is pretty much multi-threaded. It always uses several CPU cores, so the maximum 3.5 GHz turbo frequency of 8124M is pretty much elusive. In Cinebench 2024 that is much newer and it utilizes modern instructions, we have slight degradation in CPU clock frequency. When all CPU cores are utilized, 8124M drops to 3.3-3.4 GHz. But when only one CPU core is used, we get the stable 3.4 GHz. In games, for example, in Assassin's Creed Mirage Benchmark, 8124M keeps 3.4 GHz on all 18 CPU cores. When it comes to the performance, we do not have any miracles. As expected, 18 core 8124M comes behind 6268CL with the 20 core configuration. Here in Cinebench R23, we have only 913 points and 20,200 points for single and all CPU cores. In Cinebench 2024, pretty much the same picture, just different numbers. 8124M scores 55 and 1155 points. In Geekbench 6, Xeon 8124M is even less impressive. With a single core, it scores 1260 points. With all CPU cores, it scores 11600 points. If uh, testing Cinebench, we can see that 8124M can beat Ryzen 7 7700. In Geekbench 6, we see that it is uh, significantly behind Ryzen 7 7700. Blender Open Data Benchmark brings 8124M on top of Ryzen 7 7700. Here it scores almost 300 points, while Ryzen is able to deliver 280 points. So overall, we can conclude that Xeon 8124M on average doing working tasks will be slightly better than Ryzen 7 7700. But looking at 3 Mark CPU profile, we can see that it's not the best option for gaming. The CPU has pretty low single-core performance of just 586 points, and combined with only 25MB of L3 cache, we can already predict that the performance will not be great. And exactly that we can see in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here 8124M takes the last spot. It is only able to deliver 100-169 FPS. This is below Xeon E5 V3 and E5 V4 that I have tested for this chart. E5 2697 V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock is able to render 116-181 FPS. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora is a very confusing when it comes to CPU benchmarking, and here 8124M scores about the same as any other tested configuration, 95-117 FPS. F1 2023 is a fast-paced racing game, and here 8124M takes the last spot yet again. It renders 199-260 FPS, which is yet again behind E5 2697 AV4 and E5 2697V3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock. Power consumption of 8124M is not that impressive, but it is also not outrageous. Running Cinebench R23, entire system from the wall consumes about 290 watts, and when running Assassin's Creed Benchmark, the system consumes about 440 watts. Converting these numbers into efficiency, we can see that with the Cinebench R23, efficiency of 8124M roughly equals to efficiency of 6268CL with the 20-core configuration, but it loses to 6268CL when it has all 24 cores enabled. At the same time, efficiency of 70 points per watt is significantly better than the E5v3 and significantly worse than E5v4 CPUs. Ryzen 5 5600 is obviously the winner here, it's a much newer, much more energy efficient CPU. The disappointment comes when we look at the efficiency under gaming conditions. Because of the low results, 8124M takes the last spot. In Assassin's Creed Mirage it is only able to render 0.35 FPS per watt. All other tested Xeons are able to deliver 0.4 FPS per watt. 
All in all, the Xeon Platinum 8124M is a rather strange and pretty unique CPU that I don't know who is it for. It has TDP of 240 watts, and that means that it is not going to work with most of the LJ3647 motherboards without extra modifications. At the same time, the CPU does not have some sort of a spectacular performance, and I would rather buy a Xeon Gold 6150 that works with most of the 3647 motherboards, even though it costs almost double as much. With this, I would also like to remind you that I always recommend to buy what you need and not what you want. If LJ3647 is something you really need, for example because you need 6 memory channels with tons of memory, 48 PCI Express lanes, tons of SATA ports, tons of other connectivity, Basically, if you are doing some serious work and you will benefit from LJ3647, then cheap Xeons such as 8124M might be for you. But in most of the other cases, I believe that you would be better with the standard Intel LJ1700, AMD AM4 or AMD AM5. And finally, if you're looking to build an ultra-budget gaming or working computer, then LJ2011 version 3 platform with the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs is still the best. Now I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and I hope to see you in the next videos. Bye for now. The shooting's already started. Go take the capture zone. They're attacking the zone! Capture zone contested. Capture zone changing location. Get there. Can you take some knots? Pick yourself up and punch back.